to let me know Should I stay or should I go Welcome back to Duck Radio on AM950, DuckBadgerRadio.com. AM950, the progressive voice of Minnesota, Duck Badget Radio, religious radio that's not quite right. Joined by our advice guru, Carla Barnhill. Hey, Carla. Morning. How are you today? I'm fine and good. How are you? Great. Carla, we, got a, uh, we, we, have, we have a question for you. came out of the last segment. Just, just a quick little advice piece. Is it appropriate for a person to use the family uh, of, uh, restroom at a, at a mall if they don't have a youngster with them? Yes. Really? You can just go in as a yes. single user and, uh, and use it I and not, it all feel, the time. not feel social shame? Yep. I mean, if there's a lineup of, you know, people waiting, then don't go in there. It's sort of like I have the same feeling about the handicap stall. You do. I'm always a little. I'm always a little stymied about the handicap stall. Yeah, I'm really stymied. Yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> I, don't know, I, 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 I don't like using it when people are. You know, I, I don't know. I feel that I've, all that pressure. What well, you, I just feel bad. You know, because I'm like, am I supposed to use it? Is it like the handicap park, parking space? I'm with like you. It should always be open. So I feel like the family one is maybe a little bit like that. I mean, if there's, you know, like usually if it's wide open and there's nobody around. Uh-huh. I'm going in because it's going to. I'm going to be in there for less than you know 30 seconds. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, you know, because so you're not bringing not like your you busting can, your phone no. out and checking Facebook like some of us do. No, I'm not going to be in there. You know, hmm. hanging hey, around and in and out. So, hey, hey Carl, I think I, I hear that that you and I may share a similar proclivity in oh. that when when I enter a bookstore. I seem to have some sort of physiological reaction that Our requires test, speed. Stores too, right? Well, I, not for me, but apparently for you, though. Card stores and bookstores. What, what, what is it about that smell of card stores and bookstores that make people have to use the facilities? You know what? I have tried to investigate this. And it's not just you and me, John. <laughs> this is a phenomenon among people. Is it really? Yes, it really is. I'd love to hear from people on people. the Facebook page of Doug Padgett Radio on Facebook if they, uh, mm-hmm. if they too, have this experience. So, so, so go on. Just <laughs> describe it for, to those of us who don't, who don't have that experience. Well, well, basically, when I go into a card store or a bookstore and other people, like John, but it happens to lots of people, mm-hmm. all of a sudden I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and, it, I mean, it's like, it, it's, it's like inevitable. Pa- it's Pavlovian is you know, what it you know, is. We should, it we is. Should it's add- one of those. But it's not. It's not see, that's what people are like, well, it's because reading makes you relaxed. I'm like, no, it has nothing to do with being relaxed. It has to. Do, there's some. There's a chemical, something in the paper <laughs> or the ink that's given off. I'm not kidding. There is something in the air. That's like the things that I've tried to read about this. That's what they say, that there's a, you know, there's lingon or whatever it is in the paper, that there's something about that that has a... Really? A, a, uh, a I don't know, relaxing, <laughs> a laxative effect on people. I don't know what it is, but... Because you always hear that not, turkey makes people sleepy. It's not a mental thing, it really... Yeah. And that is a chemical thing, too. Yeah. I had no idea. I wonder if people who run bookstores would tell us, like, seriously, uh, the use of our public restroom is way higher than any other any of the well, industry. Look, why like, do you think Barnes and Noble has like an eight staller in there? I don't know. Do they? Is that true? Yes. You haven't you ever been in the bathroom? Maybe you guess you haven't been in the. I've been in the bathroom in every Barnes and Noble. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have that issue. No. But there are no. no but there are no. A big nice bathroom. But there are no bathrooms in Hallmark stores. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, there should be. Maybe they're like, look, we could not possibly get into solving, <laughs> yeah. you know, to fitting, filling the need of people yeah. when they come into the Hallmark they try store. To rec- they try to request mall space that by the bathroom. That is hilarious. <laughs> All right. Well, I will feel confidence from the from the advice guru. And if I get this, if I get the crusty look from someone using a public uh, family restroom, I'm going to say, my advice guru. Yeah, well, just said, don't go in there and take all day. I mean, just be, you know, be quick about it, but it's fine. Okay. Carla, what kind of advice do you have for us today on the Well, today we're going to talk about media and children. Yes, very good. We're going to do a, we're going to do a little bit of parenting thing here. And it's partly it's based I decided to talk about this based on two things. One, there's a if I may uh, brag for a moment. It's not even yes. bragging. Uh, I have a, a little blurb in a recent issue of Christianity today Excellent. about this issue. Excellent. And uh, that's in there. And then also um, the Hunger Games, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this. The Hunger Games came out over the weekend. I have be- I've become aware of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine, my friend Stacy Bender, wrote a blog post about why why parents need to think twice about bringing their young children to the Hunger Games. Not okay. even think twice. She's basically saying, don't bring kids under 12 to the Hunger Games. Okay. People, pay attention. And so it just got me thinking about the fact that that people are, uh, are not always, because this is one of these things that drives me crazy. I've been to movies, PG-13 R movies, where there are people there with your, their kids. And I'm telling you, it ruins the whole movie for me, because all I can think about is what's happening for that kid. 
Like, I'm watching someone being attacked or raped or murdered or whatever, and I'm thinking, so is that eight-year-old. Yeah, what kind of movies are you watching, Carla? Uh, <laughs> totally well, ruins it for you. <laughs> movies that adult people are allowed to go to. Right. But no, mm-hmm. I mean, because all I can think about is this poor kid being exposed to this stuff, and I just want to go knock their parents upside the head and go, what are you thinking, having your kid here? Yes. And so I think, um, I, so I wanted to talk a little bit today. This is, it's oddly enough, this is one of the areas where I tend to be a fairly conservative person when it comes to media and children. I tend to be a little bit of a, of a stickler on this. You kind of get all tipper gore on us, do you? I do get a little bit tipper gore. Okay. And here's why. I think, there, there, I guess basically my advice for, for people today is to take media seriously. I think we've sort of lost this idea that media has a, a real shaping effect on us. Mm-hmm. Um, that it really does, it, it influences how we think about things, it influences how we see the world, it influences the way we understand relationships and how people ought to behave and what's acceptable and what isn't. And as adults, we process those things in a fairly sophisticated way, and I think we forget that children don't process those things in a very sophisticated way. Nice. And so, um, so, so that's sort of the first thing, is to take media seriously, and especially, I think, visual media, movies and television, because you can't unsee something. Oh, nice. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, so like I remember as a kid reading books, and I would read something that was, you know, a little distressing or scary or disturbing. And, you know, for some kids, books can really, kids who tend, and I was one of these kids, I, you could be, I can be really scared by something I'm reading. It can mm. freak me out. Mm-hmm. But, but a lot of kids aren't like that. But, um, but when you see something, you get this visual in your head, and you can't get it out of your head. I mean, there's... I remember watching a version of the Frankenstein story when I was probably nine years old. It was on, you know, Saturday afternoon movie. You know, they used to show those, you know, show monster movies on Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and right, there was right. one where, where this this amputated arm crawled across the floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I that, do. That arm has lived under my bed for 35 years. It's <laughs> still in there. It's still there. And I'm telling, I mean, can, you know, you can't, I can't unsee that. And so it, that, that image of that arm crawling across the floor stuck in my head all these years mm-hmm, later. Mm-hmm. And so you can't, you know, once, it, once a kid sees something, I just think there's something powerful about those visuals that really can be distressing and, and, and problematic for children. Um, and another, so I, I think another thing we need to think about then is, is a lot of parents are like, well, they can handle it. Well, it's not about what kids can handle. It's about what they should handle. Very good, very good. And you how know, does one? Like now what, we only have a what, minute left, but how does one? Oh dis- my dis- goodness! I know. Well, you don't know. That's so you should err on the side of caution. Uh, like I feel like part of my job as a parent is to protect my kids' innocence a little bit. It's to protect their perspective on the world because uh-huh. you don't. Fear is a subjective thing. You don't know what's going to scare a kid. You don't know that it's going to be the arm and not the Frankenstein monster. That's right. You don't know. You don't know what it's going to be. So you need, as a parent, to err on the side of of being conservative in this stuff and be um, think about what your kids should be exposed to, not what they can be exposed to. Very good. Well, that's advice, that? Guru. Oh, that's great. Carla Barnhill. <laughs> Taking all the fun away from little kids, mm-hmm. like Badger Radio. Hey, Carla, I made a link on the on the Doug Badger Radio page on Facebook to your fantastic contribution to the article. Our television shows with moral messages good for children. Look how quick you are! Or not already taken care of? That's Carla Barnhill. You can go over to Doug Badger Radio, follow her there, click and follow along. Stick with us here on AM 950 and DougBadgerRadio.com. Thank you, Carla. Well, Water Stallion has more Energy Star.